These are Africa's future leaders. All between the ages of 25 and 35, they were selected in an intensely competitive process. The quality all have in common is a proven leadership record at home. They've just completed a six-week course at universities across the United States and come together for one last time before returning to Africa. Basically, uh, promoting good governance is an issue and most of our leaders are kind of, you know, exercising autocratic democratic system. So we we'll learn it a lot from the United States Constitution and also how they are practicing uh, democracy in general. You should be very proud. It's like winning the African Cup of Nations. The question is, though, whether this is part of a self-serving exercise by the State Department to promote U.S. influence across the African continent. The obligation is all about going back to our country and serving our community, continuing what we dream, just making it into real. So it's not like an obligation. We don't have an obligation with the U.S. statement. It's our obligation to our community. I think uh, we need to be aware ourselves that we have to play a role in the and I mean the word. It's now uh, the, the responsibility on America, you know, to tell us what we have to do. How are you? This is part of the Young African Leaders Initiative set up by President Obama back in 2014. But given massive State Department cutbacks and President Trump's known dislike for any form of Obama legacy, the question is whether it will happen again. Some contend that it's a national security issue that the U.S. maintains a close relationship with Africa. That is certainly what I would argue, yes. Um, straight across the Sahel, really stretching from Sudan all the way over to Senegal, um, the emergence of various radical Islamicist groups, uh, also criminal activity, kidnapping, uh, the resurgence of an insurgency in Mali. Um, uh, the list is rather extensive. It's unclear yet what President Trump's American First policy will mean for Africa. And behind the smiles, the deep concern that the entire continent could be left to fend for itself. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Washington.